Hi everybody, this is Ben here, and I've got a great little weekend recycling and carpentry project for you. That is how to take an entertainment center and convert it into a wardrobe. Uh, so if you look here, this is a uh, traditional old-fashioned entertainment center. It's solid wood. And I picked this up at my local thrift store because it used to be that everybody had these uh, entertainment centers that were designed for a cathode ray tube TV. So they had um, kind of a big slider and a swivel and you could slide your TV out and angle it, had these doors that slid out of the way. But uh, nobody has those anymore. They're all going to the flat screen television. So you can find entertainment centers like this in pretty good condition, nice materials at thrift stores, uh, used through classifieds. Um, I got this at my local thrift store for 40 bucks, but my little girl's room doesn't have a closet. I've got kind of a small house and there's a few things unusual on it. Um, so this room uh, doesn't even have a closet and we decided what would be nice is a freestanding wardrobe. You'll probably remember this room from when I made the Dutch door. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, click um, here uh, to take a look at the video of the Dutch door. So to get started, uh, to convert this into a uh, wardrobe or a freestanding closet, what I'm going to need to do is take this stuff out. And fortunately, that's pretty easy to do. It's a, a, a single unit, and it just has a couple of screws from below that hold it in. So I'm going to remove those screws, and then we'll get this out of here. So down on the bottom here, uh, we got a couple of slides. And that was for VCRs, uh, stereo receivers, things like that. Uh, but what's nice is that those are going to be big enough to put uh, like a laundry basket on for dirty laundry, for storage. Um, also, this slider right here is adjustable and it looks about right uh, to put two laundry baskets in there. So that'll be great. Um, over here, the space was originally for holding records vertically, um, but we're not going to use it for records anymore. So we got some dividers. We can just pull these out and... These look like they might be brass, so we'll save them for another project. Brass is a nice material to work with. And up here, these drawers were originally for VHS tapes, uh, but instead they can be repurposed as a sock drawer, for example. Uh, but for right now, what I'll have to do is take this out, and then I can get out the screws under this top part, and then we can get that out of there. So now with those screws out, this entire upper part here can pull out. Now, it does have that slider and that turntable, so I'll probably save that for some other project. What this does do now is we've got quite a bit of space here. Uh, I measured it, and basically it's three feet wide, three feet tall, and about 23 inches deep. That's just shy of the typical two foot for a standard closet, but it's really just about the right size, and it never hurts to check. So sure enough, when I uh, test hung up some shirts in there, it's just about the right size for use as a closet. But now we gotta figure out how to put a closet pole in there. So if you look here, these uh, doors can slide in and out, which is kind of cool. However, this track here is kind of in the way of where I want that closet pole to go, but it's just got one screw down there at the end. So what I'll do is I'll pull that out and I'll put it in uh, further up on the track and then that'll let me uh, uh, cut the track short get it out of the way so what I'll probably really do here take the whole thing out marking it first cut the track and then reinstall it so even though the door can open this far the closet hole is going to be right here um, but we got some holes up here so I'll just mark that and then we can cut it anywhere along here. So with the door completely off, I've got the two pieces of track. I like to mark them with a black Sharpie marker um, on the back side where no one's going to see it anyways, just so I know what's what and where it goes. And I've got this line marked here, and that's where I'm going to cut it short. And then I'll probably take a heavy pliers or something, bend some little ears on the end, 
similar to what's on back to keep the uh, rollers from sliding off the track. So basically I'll just have a really short piece of track so that the doors will still have a solid point to mount to. They just won't slide back and interfere with the closet pole anymore. So I'll go out to the garage and I'm going to cut those off. Um, I don't have a metal chop saw but I have an angle grinder with a cutoff disc. So I'll cut those off and be back in a flash. So a quick trip to the garage and I uh, was able to cut these down short. Um, you can see they're shorter, but they still got the right spots for the holes. Um, so what I'll have to do is drill a couple of holes over here now uh, because it is hardwood, so I'll need to pre-drill. So I'll just use a real skinny uh, drill bit for that. And then I can put these up and then I can put the doors back on. Uh, now one other thing I thought of right now is um, before having any of the track or the doors or anything back in there, now is a good time to uh, measure where the closet pole is going to go. So since this is uh, 23 inches deep instead of the usual 24, I'm going to put a mark at the midway point. So that's going to be uh, 11 and a half inches. So I got my marker and I'm going to measure 11 and a half inches from the back and just put a marker right there. And then I'll do that on both sides and then reinstall the track. Okay, I've got the now shortened tracks reinstalled. Uh, just reusing the original screws and the one from the back. I just moved closer up. Um, the tracks are open on the end. I wasn't able to bend tabs in the end, but that's okay. Because uh, right now I can still just slide the doors onto this from the back. And then I'll, uh, I think I'll just put a screw through to keep them from uh, sliding off the back then. So I'll leave the doors off for the moment just so I have a little bit more room to work because the next thing I want to do is uh, put up the, uh, the brackets that are going to hold the closet pole. Those are just these things. Um, you put the closet pole in this end and then you slide it down into the U, the U of this end. Uh, one thing I do need to make sure though is that it's far enough down that I can actually hang something up. You need that little bit of room above to hook it on there. So I got to come down about yay far and then uh, mark the holes, drill the holes, put the screws through to hold these on. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is measure across the back of here so I know how long to make the closet pole. So if I measure it, we are looking at 34 and 3 quarters minus a little bit because of this bracket, which is about an eighth of an inch. So if we're just an eighth of an inch shy of 34 and 3 quarters, closet pole should be good. Uh, so I'm going to go out into the garage, cut the closet pole, then I'll put the doors back on, mount the hardware, and put the closet pole into it. Uh, out in my garage I found a piece of closet pole, uh, which is kind of neat. It's fluted, and it was already painted kind of a gold color that more or less matches the woodwork, so that's good. So I took this closet pole and I cut it down to that uh, measurement. And now what I need to do, I'll put both doors back on, then I can mount up little brackets and then put the pole in. Okay, here we go, putting the closet pole in. Uh, so that's about it for the uh, the upstairs in the closet. Uh, I got the closet pulled in. I think that for the doors, um, what I'm going to do is just run a, a self-tapping sheet metal screw right through the, uh, the slider to pin those down in place, make these hinges nice and solid. Um, the hardware that holds the closet pole in is white, kind of stands out, so I think maybe I'll pull that out, paint it like a dark gold or some sort of a color that blends in. 
Uh, now another thing here that's kind of neat is that because this was an entertainment center, it already has an electric box in the back of it and a cord. So if I want to add some light in here, like a little LED strip right inside along the top, um, we're already uh, wired up for power. So now we've got room to hang up little girl dresses and shirts and things like that. And let's take a look at the bottom of the cabinet now. So down on the bottom here now, um, we just did a couple of things. Uh, we had some baskets around, so uh, these just happen to be a nice size to fit right in there. Good for stuffed animals and toys and things like that. Flat things down on this slider, uh, storage basket up here, and then over here, socks and slippers and toys. So we got a lot more organization to this room and looks nice and clean because we can close the cabinet up. So there you go. We've taken a television entertainment center and converted it over into a closet. Uh, this was maybe about an hour's worth of work. Uh, my total out of pocket cost was $40. Um, of course, if you wanted to make this a little bit jazzier, you could certainly paint it or even uh, swap out the hardware on it. That's another real easy update. Uh, any of the knobs or handles, swap that out for something a little bit fancier. Otherwise, as it is, I think it turned out pretty good. Might still add a little uh, light strip of LEDs in there for a little bit of light. If I do that, I'll make sure to let you know. And if you enjoy my do-it-yourself projects, check them out on ecoprojecthere.net. Um, I hope you enjoy this project. Maybe you'll consider doing something similar. Uh, Till next time on the next project, take care.